tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer animation. Computer animation. Let's get started with animation. Hello folks, today we talk about animating parameters in Bifrost Graph. Why would we do this? Well, because it's not trivial to animate the parameters in Bifrost Graph in that very impressive module of Maya where you can create special effects, etc. Um, in, in almost all cases we're used to, for example, this NURP circle, you can just right mouse click on any attribute here, the scale, for example, and set a keyframe or create a new expression, etc. Now the keyframe is set, and when I move forward in the timeline, forget about this character here, and uh, I change the scale to 2, the uh, circle gets just double length. But um, I uh, got the question, I asked myself th this question about the the arrows in this scene. The arrows are Bifrost Graph arrows. Uh, I did a tutorial about exactly this scene here. And uh, I was wondering how to animate the size of the arrows. Now let's have a look at the graph. Forget about the graph if you, uh, you don't have to replicate this in any way. I will we'll just create a... Um, a scene from sketch in a, in a minute. Um, when you uh, select the create arrow strands, this is the central node which creates these arrows here, uh, you find only two parameters. One is the arrowhead size and one is the stem width, width ratio. When you raise this from 0 0.2 to say 0 0.2, you get quite big arrows now. Uh, and I wondered how you animate this and the right mouse click here just gives us paste select all and nothing else so this is not the way to go about it that's why i asked the autodesk maya area how do you get there first you surf to autodesk.com then you go to community and forums under forums you scroll down to maya and under Maya you find different basic topics like programming, dynamics and the Bifrost forum. In the Bifrost forum you find helpful tips and hints and one of, the, <laughs> one of them, and this is what this tutorial is about, is my keyframing question which was answered by Maxine within, I think, a couple of hours. So what he wrote is what I'm going to demonstrate you now. So this is a brand new scene and uh, with the right mouse click we create a super ellipse. In the attribute editor which you reach by pressing Control A, Control A, Control A, you toggle between the channel box and the, it's basically the same content here, this is a bit uh, more prominent, poly super shape and under poly super shape I click on random and random again and maybe random again then I have this kind of object really nice and I just move it a little bit up and now I want to make this emit particles how do I go about it well the typical way would be to be under FX and then you go to end particles and you emit from the object that's a very simple solution and very effective and we've always loved it but uh, since I think my 20 18 or 19, we have the Bifrost Graph methodology, which is here, Bifrost Graph Editor, and we need to get acquainted with it, whether you like it or not. And the keyframing of Bifrost Graph parameters is a, is a very central thing, because we love keyframing or writing little expressions in order to make things move, for example, or rotate. So we click here on the Bifrost Graph Editor. If you don't see this, go to Settings Preferences, Plugin Manager, and in the Plugin Manager you find the Bifrost Graph module, which you need to load in your case, maybe. So Bifrost Graph Editor, we have three options, and we always, in our case, use the Create Graph methodology. Usually I would say let's delete this because we don't need it but actually we will need it today. And uh, now let me grab my mouse 
because I'm usually working with a graphics tablet and the, but, the, but the middle mouse button which we need here middle mouse button uh, I drag the super shape into this area here now in order to emit particles we tap use the tap key and here are the recent commands I used when trying things out uh, what we'll type in into this field is particle and we want to create a particle system from uh, this mesh, this geometry. And the starting point is always source the particles, not source the particle rotations or simulate particles. It's just sourcing the particles. That means we create, a, we link the source of the particles, this object here, to actual particles. And you see that it does work because we can now connect this blue output with the blue input of geometry here very easy straightforward now um, if I connect the particle source to the output nothing would happen because we need to simulate the particles the particles are currently not visible we need to make a simulation that's why we press tab again and simulate so we simulate the particles not npm not arrow not should simul simulate but this one and here you see source and sources so this is the optimal connection here and that's basically it we connect the particles to the input or the output and now you see the particles there I minimize the Bifrost graph editor and I run the simulation from the very start I made a tutorial about uh, particle systems in Bifrost Graph, maybe even two tutorials, I don't remember, uh, but you find them on my channel. Uh, but here we want to concentrate on the gravity. And the question is, why do the particles fall down? They fall down and I searched for things. For example, the super shape, it has basically nothing to edit. The source particles has a lot of things to edit. For example, the end frame of the emission, if you switch this on, or the distribution from the volume or from the surface. So uh, lots of things, but no gravity. We have the speed, we have the direction, we have the normal speed, we have the spread, bounciness, age limit is currently set to two, so we don't have infinitely many particles at the end of our simulation. And the size of the particles, when I uh, reduce this to 0 0.05, the particles are smaller, but they still fall down. So this is amazing that we don't see the gravity anywhere. It's in simulate particles, there's nothing to be edited. The answer to this question is not about keyframing, but it is a, a knowledge thing. It is about settings. We want to simulate the particles with certain settings, which should be available here now. Um, tap settings. Particle solver settings. That's exactly what we need. Solver settings goes in here. And in the solver settings, you all of a sudden see there's a gravity vector and when we reduce this from minus 9.8 to 0 the particles spread in all directions and they don't fall down this is good but you need that knowledge to find the gravity in the settings because the default of the simulation has gravity but it's not sitting in here explicitly and even I search for it when I double click on this part here even when you s double click the solve particles which opens this I never ever found the gravity well let's go back to this tab which is our tab now we want to animate the gravity it's currently set to zero and what we need is this and this is the key to this tutorial we need an input if you don't have the input here, just use the tab key and create an input node. You can create as many input nodes as you like. In the particle solver settings, we need to localize the gravity vector, not the gravity as such. If we uh, keyframe the gravity, it means switching gravity on and off, but the gravity vector 
enables us to set values, changing values for the gravity in X, Y, and Z. Y is the interesting option here. Okay, in, under general, if you click on the plus sign, you don't see anything about gravity. And under the global solver settings, you see the gravity. This entry is this line here. The gravity vector is this line. And the substeps is this line, etc. So what we do, and this is really great to know, and thank you, Maxime, for telling me this, for explaining this uh, in the Autodesk Maya area. We just connect this to the gravity vector. It's done. And now the gravity vector is blanked out. It's grayed out. We don't see anything here. So where is it then? Uh, how do we keyframe it? Because now when we run the simulation, we have a gravity of zero. And we go to the Bifrost graph shape, and down here you find extra attributes. Open that section, and here you see the gravity vector. <sighs> and now you can animate this. And of course you can set keyframes. For example, we're currently at frame 38. Let's set a key here and go a little bit forward and type in minus 9 and go a little bit forward and type in plus 9. So we have three keyframes. I could have uh, right mouse clicked set key uh, for every keyframe but I have auto key set on so uh, anytime I change this value I set a new keyframe. Let's see what the animation shows. Spreading falling, rising. You can do the same thing with the other dimensions, of course, and just let me give you a hint. We can uh, select this field here, and now I type in an expression. Don't worry, it's just a simple function, which we always start with the equal sign, equals, and then in order to make it a little bit more visible, we type in 10 times sign of time. Don't forget the open and close the brackets. And we press enter. Now we have a function here. Currently it's set to minus 9.77 because we add frame whatever, 108. It's a swinging animation in X. And this is the X vector, the red one. So what we'll, we'll see now is the changing gravity with the keyframes and the changing gravity vector in X in this dimension uh, with a sign expression to the right and to the left. And when we expand this, the sign function goes on forever, whereas the keyframes don't. So now I showed you how to set keyframes for parameters in the Bifrost graph, you need an input node and you need a second input node if you want to control other attributes. For example, the size. Why don't you want to try this? And now I give you four examples basically with this animation here, with this super ellipse. In the first example, I animated the gravity, just as I just showed you. The gravity starts at zero, then it goes down, and this is a total symmetrical animation because we only have the Y gravity vector changing. And it goes back to zero. The second example has the same thing with the gravity, but then I, in addition, I animated the rotation of the original geometry, that is the emitting geometry, that is the super ellipse. I uh, used a random function for all three rotations. We don't see the uh, super shape because I hide it, but it is the shape which emits the particles. And uh, the, the effect is more or less subtle but now you don't have that symmetric look. You have quite a difference between right and left, up and down. That's what this random function of the super ellipse does. 
The third example has the same as before, gravity and the random expression, plus a sine function for the particle size. That is your homework, so to say. That uses an extra input node. Now you see the changing sizes of the particles. You have very small ones, and with a sine function that means they're getting uh, smaller and then bigger and then smaller again. With a random expression, it's uh, really cool. And this is the last one I wanted to show you. That's uh, gravity and the random expression for the geometry, the sine expression for the particle size, and a cosine expression you could have done it with a sign as well, for the particle normal speed. That means the particles spread out in a cosine way, that means a pulsating way, uh, with a higher or lower speed. Let's have a look. Very fast and much slower. And very fast again and much slower. Now I'll show you all four animations in one screen and I wish you a very, 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 a very good day. Bye-bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.